you want to know how to get that signature Star Wars look inside of Blender, well, I don't know how to recreate it perfectly, but I've got a bunch of the key factors under control. Now this tutorial is largely going to focus on lighting, because the lighting is a very very important part of the Star Wars look. You can also see in this image how we've got the light set up quite evenly, so that we've got a basically divisionary line between the two sides of the face, where this is, this is all red over here, and then this is all kind of white, and then we've got this orange accent that kind of like appears along this side and fills in here. And we've got little splashes of that over here too as well. But it basically just has your eye look at a bunch of different pieces of it. And it's got a nice, nice symmetry. It's like, it's a safe option to have just symmetry like this. I find this extreme close up to the face of stormtroopers and stuff like that. Very, very common within Star Wars films. For instance, stuff like this. This is a first order stormtrooper, obviously. But these kinds of shots are very, very common in Star Wars. And obviously my one's a lot more simple and just like flat on got this kind of shadow area here off to the side and then it's split and very heavily contrasted with this area full of highlights um, and that's giving us a very interesting tone and we've got the starts of accenting over here but you can mostly see it on these guys we've got just this orange kind of rim light which is going around and lighting all of these guys on the sides and then obviously we can see the motivated lighting over here we can actually see where that light's coming from which is really cool but you get the gist now in order to create good lighting an amazing starting point which I'm sure that most of you have probably already heard of is this three-point lighting setup. So we're gonna have the camera facing towards the subject. We are going to have a key light off to one side. This is generally gonna be the strongest light of your scene and is gonna give the base color and tone of your scene. Now this fill light over here is basically meant to cover all of the areas which the key light leaves in the shadow. And you're basically gonna get a different shadow or like alternate color on the other side and that's gonna be the contrast. There's gonna be a contrast between the color of your key light and the color of your fill light. The fill light's gonna be softer and um, a bit less bright than the key light generally as well. Lastly, we have the backlight, also known as the rim light, and this light's generally going to silhouette our subject, and it's going to give a bit of accent to the edges of the model. This is another great diagram here, which shows a bit more in detail. You can pause the video if you want to have a proper look yourself. Alright, and how are we going to recreate this inside of Blender, you may ask. Now, there's a lot of ways which people go about doing this. So, for instance, this would be an example of a um, very, very strong rim light pointing to the back of the character you can see that it starts here and then it just completely floods and we're gonna get basically a very very strong kind of orange um, tone to it you see if we hide this all of that um, cool kind of like background texture and detail and this like nice accenting on the side is all gone me personally though I've been using a point light the difference between a point line and an area light is that the area light is directional the point light is not so this light is just gonna softly light the whole room but I prefer for this scene in particular the kind of softer orange tone that we get on the edge of the helmet here. I think that that is a very nice touch and I think that it's a little bit more preferable than the more harsh light in the area light. But we can obviously tune the power and the um, radius to get different desired outcomes. Now this is kind of our key light for the scene. This is a semi-powerful completely white light and that's basically giving us all of this kind of white light. You see if I remove that it's all just gonna be gone but this yeah giving us this kind of like white accents dividing our piece in two here which is quite nice and then lastly we've got this guy over here which is our fill light and this one's red and that's giving us this red accent on the other side of the face you can see if we remove that it's actually a lot more subtle it's the most subtle of the three lights pretty much always but it's just giving a extra red hit to this side of the figure now another thing you'll notice is that there's very very good atmosphere in a lot of um, Star Wars scenes you've got the air always feels very like kind of full and um, interesting and a lot of the way that this light is being carried in this scene which you want to kind of do before setting up your three-point lighting you're going to want to set up a volumetric around your scene now you see if we go ahead and hide this we've got no light around the subject we've still got the same nice lighting on the subject itself but we want to add a volumetric and that is going to do this the light is going to be dispersed throughout the air and now back to um, more atmosphere I'd highly recommend dust. If you actually want to dedicate a tutorial on how I do my dust for my shots, um, then I'm more than happy to make one. It's not actually way too difficult at all, and it looks quite nice. But essentially, it's just a particle system which is instancing a bunch of little icospheres, and those icospheres have a sort of translucent texture on them, and then they just kind of float around erratically, and then we can use cool tricks like partway through this shot. I have a turbulence field around here, and I've got the strength of the wind animated, or the turbulent, you can see all the particles start to kind of fly around a lot at this point. It's a lot more chaotic. Now there is also another method to lighting, and that is using physical lighting objects within your scene, rather than the 
lights that come with Blender. And so basically we just apply an emissive texture to this plane and what this is going to do is do the same kind of thing that one of these light panels would do in real life. We're basically just simulating a fluorescent plane inside of Blender and that's going to give us much softer lighting. You can see what this is doing here. If I just hide that, we would be completely in shadow otherwise, but we're just getting this soft white accent and just like kind of lightly illuminating the side of this guy's face. And in this rough door model that I created over here for this shot as well, I've um, put some little light panels in here as well. And you can see that they have a really nice effect with the depth of field um, in this shot where they get kind of blurred out. And then the compositing will enhance that as well further. This is an intense version of that, but yeah, if I enable the compositor in here, we can get some awesome bloom and stuff going on. Animations are another big thing. Um, it's not really much of recreating a Star Wars look, it's just a general thing, but having mo capped animations tends to work really well. I tried my hand at creating a running animation, and it looks incredibly goofy. It took me like half an hour to make, and it, and it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> now, if you want to create blaster bolts for your scenes, like here, my favorite trick for this is to basically spawn in a um, stretched cylinder or kind of subdivided cube just like this and we'll just start with the zero scale and then we spawn it in and then we just animate it to move in that direction very very fast that you want it to go and then if it's off camera it doesn't need to move or anything it can just kind of sit there bloom on top of it it's going to be like a very bright blaster bolt that's coming out it's going to look pretty cool it's always nice to add some debris on the ground um, some background carnage and, and dead bodies never go amiss. Another great tip just for making Star Wars scenes in general is sparks. Add lots and lots of sparks. There's a lot of good tutorials on here. If you want to know specifically how I'll make mine, then yeah, you can comment again and I'm happy to make a tutorial. The only really interesting thing about my sparks is that they do change color throughout the, the duration. You can see the shader, which makes this work. We've just got some um, funny stuff going on in the shader editor, but it's all quite simple. So again, yeah, I can make a tutorial easily or you can just screenshot this and use this for later but this only works in cycles keep in mind so um, I try and use it in Eevee because it won't work sadly this isn't really much of a camera or like um, shot setup trick but I'd highly recommend you look into creating your own greebles this is this is the simple setup that I have for creating these um, kind of procedural just random details on the walls and we can change this around quite easily um, and like create different sorts of looks that is really a lot of it, but yeah, make sure that you don't have um, surfaces too clean. Make sure that you've got some grits of normal maps, some displacement maps going on, stuff like that. It just makes everything look way more interesting. And please, just, just make your own models. Even if they're just small, simple models like this little weird cylinder thing that I made here with some with some lights on it. Like, just, just go ahead and make some of your own models. Like, they don't have to be complicated. I made this little screen, and I used my own neon signs tutorial to create this cool kind of texture on it and then some little buttons off to the side as well. And then I made this cup for my friend and it has a little Yeezen logo on it as well, but that's just kind of off to the side. The biggest tip is just to recreate shots that you see in Star Wars and figure out how they're putting their camera, how they're placing their characters, how they're doing their lighting, and then just what elements of the shot that they have. I was planning on making this into a full short film and I might still in the future if this video really blows up or something, but they, they, they don't usually. And just focus on creating those very Star Wars specific things, you know? Like for instance, the very, very um, prominent Star Wars trait, this kind of like bullet hole glow on impacts, like it's a very subtle thing, but it makes projectiles in your scene just feel like so much more impactful than they would otherwise. Silhouetting is a very powerful trick as well, which I've kind of maybe a bit overused in this shot, but it makes this guy really kind of stand out in the middle of all this chaos. But yeah, just monkey see, monkey do. Take what you see, try and recreate it in Blender, try and fail multiple times, but yeah. That, is, that has been my Star Wars project, and I hope that this has been a useful, educational kind of tutorial for you. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for all the support. It's been using. Goodbye.